Welcome to the Open Mic Podcast Show with Mike Midgley. Hey, and welcome to the Getting the Game uh, Podcast Show, Episode 9. And this week, we're going to be talking about everything SEO essentials for entrepreneurs. And I'm super stoked, excited to be joined by Mark Radford, uh, the success of lead SEO and web strategist. Mark, it's great to have you on the show today, buddy. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks, Mike. And it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's good to be on this, on this podcast. Cheers. Fantastic. And I think, you know, SEO is just one of those subjects, isn't it, that, um, you know, we think you either understand it, you get it. And, you know, we get a lot of questions coming through the blogs and our traffic channels where, you know, in the live events that we do, people are saying to us, you know, um, you know, tell me more about SEO. You know, can I do this myself? Is this, you know, something that, um, you know, we need to pay somebody to do? So hopefully we're going to get a lot of these answered for it. But just as a bit of a warning, really, and, uh, you know, you don't want to go all in with SEO. Um, You know, it should be part of a large your digital strategy and for the entrepreneurs out there you know we have a wide range of an audience uh, we've got beginners and we've got more advanced or intermediates so you know we're going to try and cover all angles for you today on this show and, and I know Mark's going to do that and and I think you know Mark's also going to cover you know things about you know SEO can be a slow burning you know it's not a hundred percent reliable so um, if you're not thinking about some form of paid traffic you know Google Facebook ads then you know we talked earlier about it being part of a wider strategy so um, you know Google Google are always tweaking their algorithms and, you know, if you're just relying 100% on SEO, that's a, a fairly risque strategy. So, um, you know, don't just think SEO crazy. Um, you know, you want to be thinking about this as a wider strategy and we're going to share some great tips. And, you know, Mark, um, a little bit of background to yourself. Obviously, if you could just open up, tell us a little bit about your digital experience, what you do at the success of here, uh, just for the audience and uh, we can build your authority up here and uh, the stage is yours. Just tell us a little bit bit about you right okay well yeah I mean I've been building websites now for 10 11 12 years you know it's my bread and butter stuff you know and like you say SEO is a, it, it's, a, it's a large part of websites now it, it seems to be the buzzword out there Mike you know yes you know what, what does it stand for what is it what's this black hat stuff what's this white hat stuff? <laughs> are we doing it right are we doing it wrong like you say do I need to spend thousands or hundreds or do I need to do it at all these are all questions that I get on a regular basis but what I say is it's really integral to your website success. Absolutely. Um, the way that I explain it, if I can just go into it, I mean, I usually say you can have the best looking website in the world with all the nice imagery, all the, 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 the correct text, all the best videos. But if you're not getting traffic to the website through organic SEO or paid SEO, paid traffic, uh, you might as well take it offline. Yeah, it's like having, and you know, look, let, let, let's, you know, you get straight talking on these podcast shows. We're not here to yeah. wrap you in, you know, fluffy blankets, guys. Um, you, you look at all the high street stores. They're on the high street for a reason because there's foot traffic there. And if you go and build a, an awesome store, a bricks and mortar store, a bathroom store, you know, you could be a, a hairdresser, you could be a, a, a spa, and you bury it seven rows down on an industrial estate and you don't put a sign out there, you'd have the best experience in the world. But if nobody's visiting your store or walking through the front door, then you know you're going to be out of business pretty pretty quickly unless you've got some type of yeah. online awesome business so you know getting that visibility i think is what we're talking about mark isn't it well that's it well that's it seo if you want to think of it as a word it's your website's visibility um it, again talking about you know obviously ranking and you know getting to the top spot on google through organic seo um you've got to be at the top spot you've got to be on page one uh, and if you're not there's statistics to say that you know 80%, 90% of your customers don't even go past um, the first page of Google. Yeah. So like I say, if you're not on the front page, it's all, you've got no visibility. Yeah. So, so here, here's this one to write down and not that I practice this guys. So if the entrepreneurs out there, please take this with a pinch of salt, but there's a great saying out there, where's the best place to hide a dead body? And the best place to hide a dead body is on page two of Google. So if your business <laughs> is on page two of Google guys, then, you know, the reality is, um, you know, you better chance of finding a dead body out there than you have your business. So, uh, page one is where you need to be. Of course, there's different strategies that we talked about. You a digital strategy earlier uh, there but uh, you know SEO yeah. is what we're going to focus on on this particular podcast so Mark uh, building 10 or 12 years uh, the type of projects you're doing at the success of at the moment um, you know from SEO and you know it, 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 like you said it's integral into the website is it, as you're building them and you're constantly doing that right out of the gate well that's it yeah I suppose there's um, a twofold strategy that we do with SEO we, we obviously tackle the on-page SEO stuff so we make sure we get the keywords in there 
Um, we do the, sorry, a step before that, jumping into it a little bit further here. So we do the keyword analysis. Let's check out what your customers are typing into Google to find your services. It's as simple as that. So we do the keyword analysis, we make sure we've got the correct words on the website, make sure everything's tagged up correctly. And again, yeah. I don't want to go into too much detail uh, at this early stage in the yeah. podcast, but um, yeah, we need to tick all the boxes on your website with the organic stuff. And then moving forward, uh, we need to be driving traffic through paid SEO as well. Awesome. So it's the, full, it's the full marketing circle with that, yeah. No, that's fine. And I think, look, you know, the, the, there's the right way of doing something, there's a the wrong way of doing something. And maybe something that we have just sort of come to mind, Mark, uh, here is that, it's okay if we're building websites from scratch and we're adopting this in, but also maybe if you could just make a note and we can cover for the entrepreneurs listening. Uh, if I've already got a website, um, you know, and it's maybe I don't want to build another one because I've invested my money into there and I'm happy with what I've got, but, you know, my SEO sucks a little bit. So um, I t- oh, if we could just cover some tips and tricks about, you know, if you've already got a website, how we can obviously, you know, start to work on SEO from there. So um, lots to get listening with. Let's get cracking with the show. And thanks again, Mark. It's, it's a real pleasure i'm really appreciative of your time being on here today and um, i know the audience is going to get some serious value so if, if you're genuinely interested in getting on page one improving your organic which is your free search ranking um stay tuned we've got some awesome stuff to share and i think what i'd like to open up mark with really is uh, the question that you know sort of is all around uh, the speed of a website really and i'm just wondering if you could sort of share with us um your thoughts around why that's important on from an seo perspective well yeah i suppose we've all done it we've gone to a website just to give you an example you've gone to websites you're looking for whatever it is whether it's a product or service and you've got the website bad experience it doesn't load it doesn't load within two three four seconds you're left hanging whether that's on desktop tablet mobile whatever it is yeah it's just a bad user experience mike Mm -hmm. so if you're out there and you're saying you've you've either built your website and you're already on a server or i suppose you're in in the phase of building a new website you've really got to take your website speed um into consideration it really is an important factor and like i say with Google, it, uh, it's website speed is a ranking factor, uh, especially with obviously the the emergence of mobile phone users. I think it was last year or the year before. It was the first time that mobile users actually um, switched. Yeah. It was more popular than desktop users, yeah. which is incredible. So what is it? Seventy five percent mobile search now, or something? Or is it a bit less than that? Well, I think it's a little bit less than that, but it's it's increasing on a on a yeah. yearly yearly basis. So it's not going away, is it? That's what we're saying. Oh, no, absolutely not. To the point now where if you actually do some Google tests with your website, they give you they mo- the mobile test first because they know that you know a, a, a proportion of your a large proportion of your customers will be looking on mobile devices. So something to consider. Um, but I suppose as the first first key point, I mean. It, you need to your website needs to be loading within a second i mean i try to keep all my websites with under a second yeah uh, if not faster yeah i was uh, i was on a live cast with infusionsoft with icon uh, a couple of days ago and um, and and this is something that you know you can maybe check out on the infusionsoft channels they had some statistics and i'm not sure if this was north america or it was global so you know take take this with a little bit of uh, loose guidance but for every second that it took extra to load, it was affecting conversions by over 7%. You've got um, it. You know, so every second, 7%. Now, I don't know if that's 2 seconds, 14% or anything, but, you know, it was a stat that they put up as a headline, and that's Infusionsoft, a global digital SaaS software company. You know, that obviously, we're here at the success of, you know, we've got five Infusionsoft partners in here, so, you know, we, we, we heavily have embedded into that environment. But for every second extra it takes to load, it's affecting conversions by over 7%. So, you know, not only an SEO, there's the bounce rates taking them out there and you know they're gone aren't they they're off to somewhere else well that's it yeah yeah and i, I think i read the same stat actually yeah seven percent and you know stack that up you know three four five seconds they're just going to go mike they're not yeah. going to hang around with this no absolutely so that can come into hosting as well there's certain things that you can host with out there and the speed of your sites the way it's built and everything isn't there it's a great question um so how do you make your website Fast, fast yeah. loading. Um, how do you improve your website speed? So there's a couple of factors. Uh, the main ones being, let's start with the server. Let's, yeah. you know, if you're a UK business and you're predominantly your audience as well, this is important that your audience is in UK as well. You know, you want to target your UK audience. You need a data center which is in the UK. It's as yeah. simple as that. Brilliant. So when you're looking for a new survivor, you know, server provider, there's a couple of important factors that I, I always go into. Okay, you've got to have a UK data center. That's the first and foremost. They've got to be running um, 
PHP 7. It's the yeah. new PHP um, language that, you know, a lot of people would expect to see now. So make sure you're looking out for PHP 7. Another thing would be to, to, to just check out the 24 hour support as well. That's, yeah. that's the three tips on, on, on servers, I suppose. But the, the first thing, the data center, it needs to be a, a UK data, data yeah. center. Awesome, Mark. And, and, you know, let's just stop the press. And I do this, it's, it's, really, it's a profound statement. You know, a lot of people are hunting for server hosting based on price or, you know, cutting corners. Yeah. You, know, you, wouldn't be, you wouldn't build your house on dodgy foundations. Why would you build a site on a dodgy? No, I'm not saying a dodgy host, guys, but, you know, a, a site or a host that's not relative to your market. I mean, here at the Successor Group, we're on what is it, WP Engine, Mark, which is a, one of the leading host sites. It's fast, it's lightning fast, it's where we want it to be, it serves it. But, you know, we have a big demand in high level of digital properties that we've got out there from blogs to shops to to to, to audit configurators and, and as obviously as main site and landing pages so we've got a big demand for it your demands might be a bit smaller as an entrepreneur especially if you're starting out the more advanced guys then you know the value that things like wp engine to provide is just phenomenal and you know there's other benefits to that for speed but um you know, I also say stop the press. What Mark's just covered with you there is absolute dynamite and, and, and fundamental value, which is stop looking at the price that you're looking at your hosting. Find out what your circumstances are based. Is it UK? Is it UK customer? Am I in the UK or whatever? And then make sure you ask these questions. And, you know, if you head over to blog.thesuccessor.uk, uh, there'll be the show notes here, uh, and you'll be able to get the call transcripts and all the links uh, that Mark's saying, such as whether from my WP Engine point of view or these sort of top tips that Mark's covering there. So, you know, don't worry if you listen in the car or, you know, you're mobile and you can't write it down. Head over to blog.thesuccessor, check out the podcast section, and you're going to get all the show transcripts and all these tips there so mark that's awesome i appreciate that and just to wrap on that a uh, couple of sites something like webpagetest.org or other sites to check your speed test is there any other co- other urls you could check maybe or, or advise to, to check to see how fast your speed is yeah yeah i mean the main one i mean we're, we're all talking about google here google yeah the, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. We, 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 google says jump we jump so um the, google have got a, a, a page speed insight tool yeah, page speed insight tool, um, catchy. Um, but yeah, if you, if, you go, if you if you search for that on Google, you'll you'll you'll, you'll find a test. You pop your URL into there, and it'll give you a score out of a uh, hundred. Yeah, um, red if it's below thirty, whatever it is. Uh, you know, going up to fifty, sixty, you're in the amber, and then green, you know, eighty plus. So yeah. if you get into the, uh, I think it's eighty or eighty five plus. Um, if you get into the green section, you're doing quite well. Awesome. Um, if you can get over ninety five you're doing pretty damn good. I mean, most of our sites, we get them to 87, between between 87 to 92. Yeah. Just because of the way that way um, WordPress is built, um, there is ways that we can we can improve on that. But yeah, pop it into that tool uh, and it'll give you the information that you need. But it's it, it really is an important factor. And obviously yeah. Google with their own tools just shows that. Yeah, and Google, look, let, let's be realistic guys out there as entrepreneurs, you know, I don't know, do I do I know anybody who's searching on Bing or Yahoo? Well, I'm sure there is somebody out there, but I don't know anybody. So, you know, Google, Google it's what it is. Um, so that link is, you know, got a Google search engine, search Google page speed insights. Uh, that's going to give you a link. And just in case we've got some super um, uh, basic uh, starters out there who are not even getting started with web or SEO, uh, URL, just to be clear, Mark, um, is, is, is your website address, what you've got to type in. So, um, you know, it's, it's like companyname.com, like here with the success of .uk. Um, I don't want to talk too technical. I mean, well, I know we've got a lot of advanced listeners and I know what a lot of people know what that is, but sometimes I get some feedback from the show, Mark, that says, hey, you mentioned this, uh, you know, uh, analogio, and I have no idea what it means. So just in case there's any... Uh, really new starters out there. URL is your, what you would type in, such as www.apple.com or whatever. So you got that from that. Or it could be HTTP. And, you know, that sort of uh, segues as nice in, Mark, to the uh, SSL certificates. And I mean, a big part there on um, SEO ranking, isn't it, now these days? It does. And I suppose still touching on the server side of things, you know, um, security is a big factor on your server and, and not only that on your domain name on, on your website as well and we see on the news all the time you know the threat of hacks and people trying to um, 
to gain access to your website, to exploit your website, to, to, to do whatever they want to do with it. Yeah. So it's a sad world that we live in, but unfortunately we've got to protect against it, haven't we? So yeah, um, not only not only protecting yourself as a business from getting being hacked or damaged or poor point. reputation, yeah. but also it, you've got to think about, you know, again, for us, and, and again, I just make reference to us, Mark, as you know, Mark's been instrumental in, in, in building this with Alistair, is we run a membership site, you know, our Rockstars membership site here at The Successive. So not only are we sort of protecting our data, but you've got to think about if you're protecting you, your client's data, are they putting information into your site? Uh, you've also got a responsible the responsibility there to, you know, protect, you know, the data that you capture in and, you know, whether you regulate it to require a data protection license, you know, or, or anything like that, you know, there's something that you can check out there, just search data protection license on, online and, you know, it'll tell you whether you need one or not. But it depends on the different types of data you're doing. But um, it's not just you that potentially you're exposing to either, you know, financial or data fraud or, you know, all that. You, you could be exposing your customers and that could have further repercussions. So when we talk about a SSL certificate, Mark, before we really get dig deeper into this, maybe you could just explain again for the basics out there and the really early starters, what is an SSL certificate and what's the difference in the URL or the domain bar? If you could just start with that, then build up from there, buddy, for us. Of course. Yeah. So just to, to break it down then, SSL stands for Secure Socket Layer. Um, basically, all it means, it just encrypts your um, your conversation. So, right, let me take it a step. I always do this. I always jump into it. Let me take it a <laughs> it's step. It's all right. So what you've got to remember is how, so, so the fundamentals of a website. So a website is somebody on us, now we're on a computer and we want to view a website which is stored on technically another computer. All a yeah. server is, is just another computer which you ping and you get the information from that server sent back to you. So all an SSL certificate or how hackers can actually gain information into, I suppose, the website traffic is being in the in-between point, you know, whether they yeah. hack the website or the, the communication between you and the server. So what the SSL certificate does is just encrypts that mic. Yeah. Um, all connections between computers are, are encrypted, I think, with a 128-bit encryption anyway. Yeah. But what an SSL certificate does, it just doubles that. Yeah. So it takes it to, what's it, 256 or something like yeah, that. So like it, that. It, it doubles the encryption. Um, it means makes it harder to hack. That's it. In, in simple terms, it protects you from hacks. It's hard, It makes you harder to hack. Well, could you still get hacked? Of course. Yeah. I mean... It's if they want to get in, they're going to get in, aren't they? I mean, some of the main, some of the biggest companies in the world, government, you know, websites still yep. get hacked by, <laughs> by kids in the bedroom, 14-year-old kids in the bedroom. So I suppose what we're doing with an SSL certificate is you're protecting yourself to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, you, you like to cover your bases, you like to cover your information, and you, like you said, your customer's information. Um, but, I mean, from a, from a, I suppose from a customer's side, Mike, a customer's point of view, what an SSL certificate does, it, it builds confidence. It, it does. Builds, you know, if you go onto a website and you see the green lock, so, yeah. again, just to explain for, for anybody that's new to, to, to web, web SEO and, you know, SSL certificates, if you go to a website on your browser, whether it's Chrome or Firefox or Internet Explorer, um, in the top left-hand corner, next to, you know, the, the website URL, the domain name, um, you've got, you'll see uh, on a secure website, you've got a, a green secure yeah. padlock. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll be familiar with it, won't you, Mike? Yeah. So um, with websites that now haven't got that, um, haven't got an SSL certificate um, on the website, you'll see it's actually got a, a round circle on an ex exclamation mark. Yeah. Just to basically say that this website is secure. secure. The other thing as well is if you've ever done e-commerce, whether it's Amazon or, you know, whatever online, you know, where you put your credit card in, yeah. you know, personally, just from a personal point of view, if I'm ever asked to put my credit card in, even if it's a reputable company, and we yeah. talked about URLs earlier in the top, where Mark's talking in the top left-hand side, there's a padlock. There's also now what's called HTTP or HTTPS, and the S is the one that's encrypted. And yeah. if, a, if a site's asking me for my credit card, and it ain't got HTTPS. I don't care if it's British Gas or you know, you know, I'm sure they've got it covered. But I don't care. Even if it's a, a well-known company, I will not put my uh, credit card into a site that isn't got a HTTPS. And the S makes you know, uh, you know, the secure sort of socket layer in there for, to make it that covered. So you know, they're just little things. So Mark's talking about here is confidence that you know, especially if you are trying to drive an online store or you're planning on building an online store, um, then you know, whoever's doing your site just make sure that they get it locked down and they make as secure as they possibly can it's going to give more confidence to you as a as, as a as a business for the data that you're holding including your own but also it's going to make sure that your customers are going to stick to you a little bit better or to your site with confidence and, and hopefully transact with you especially if you're doing e-commerce 
Well, that's it. So we covered, I suppose it protects you from hacks. It actually builds confidence with customers, but coming back to, I suppose, the subject of SEO, um, SSL certificates, HTTPS now is a ranking factor with Google. Yeah. Um, they started taking it seriously, I think it was back in 2010, and that's when they first, you know, started to consider this, all oh, right, okay, encryption could be good for the for the net, yeah. for the web, and, and Google's all about helping, you know, supporting the web, so, and now more than ever, I mean, they're just, you know, it's a, it's a core ranking factor for Google now, Mike, Yeah. and, and I can encourage people that are listening to this to actually test it, yeah. so type in their, their uh, whatever it is, products or services, or just test it with anything, you know, Anything, anything on Google, and you'll see everybody on the first page of Google will. will oh, yes. I mean, you have to you have to check this, but um, most of them will have an SSL certificate, which tells yeah. them what. Yeah, what Mark's saying is, look, there may be some obscure niche out there that just happens to be the only person in the world who supplies something. But outside of that, especially in your competitive industries, so your high value keyword search, where so if you're paying a high dollar for or high pound, uh, you know, uh, pay per click for like Google ads or whatever. Um, you know, I know we're talking about organic stuff here in SEO, but, you know, Mark's saying that the main companies on page one that's ranking higher all got HTTPS, secure server licenses, and Google are looking for that and they're going to improve Absolutely. your ranking from that and Mark we've mentioned earlier about if somebody did get hacked um, you know maybe you can just share some tips about if they get hacked how they could get out of that and maybe a link like security net or something like that or or whatever that they can get through with them to help them yeah I suppose if you do get hacked um, first and foremost you need to put um, preventive measures in place and the best way to do that is to, to just Back up your website on a regular basis. Yeah, brilliant. Um, I know we talked about servers, and some servers, server companies like WP Engine do it automatically for yeah. you. They've got you back. You're covered. Um, so that's maybe another you know tick in the box when you're looking for a, a host company. So make sure that you've got a backup. And if you have, it's just a simple case of you know reverting it back to yesterday, the day before, a week ago, a month ago, to a fresh install that's clean, that's um, secure. And um, you should be away at that point. Mm. But there are, I think you just mentioned there, Securi. Um, they're, I suppose, they're predominantly for WordPress. Again, yeah. WordFence as well. WordPress yeah, yeah. Is a big one. Um, I use them quite a lot. They've helped me in the past with a couple of a couple of tasks. They're, they're really great. Great support, WordFence, mm. actually. So, yeah, they, those type of plugins, they've got plugins, Mike, that you can install into your website. That, they give you, a, you know, a, quite a, a robust uh, security so, package. Straight, yeah. straight out, straight out, the, straight out the um, the door there with that so i'd encourage you you know to have a look at security.net and um yeah word fence i think it is on that one and it, yeah. like i say if you do have if you do get hacked just roll your website back to a, a previous day that's the, the yeah that that's great and a lot of the people now and you know you don't have to go to the wp engine pro sort of setups that we run you know we're in the we're in the industry of course we're in digital marketing that's what we do we use the best tools but you know even you know we've got we've still i think we still have mark don't we a GoDaddy server still running and you know even things like the GoDaddy hosted sites that you the, 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 they'll automatically back that up and you like mark said you can just flip it from back up to yesterday or the day before or whatever so just make sure it's set up and that's pretty cool but you know security.net and wordpress uh, as mark said we'll put those links in the, the show notes uh, and you can download those and check them out at your leisure and of course if you've got any concerns um you can always shoot us a, a message on the blog that this, this this podcast you know again if you're listening mobile um on your on your on your android or your apple phone that's fine on the on the app if you're watching it online on the blog then that's fine just scroll down leave us a comment and mark i'm sure you'll jump on there and get that answered and, and point him in the right direction yeah Absolutely, yeah. Anything to do with, like you say, SEO or any security, um, any server questions, Brilliant. we're here to help. Yeah. Fantastic. So we, we've talked really so far about, you know, obviously starting out or if you've got a, a site already there, we're going to cover that, I suppose, in more broader terms. But uh, speed of your site is pretty important. We, we've got that in the bank. You know, that is one to put in the bank for sure. Uh, the power of the SSL, you know, the, you know that, that security that for, for both sides of both the customer and yourself. Um, so, Mark, talk to me about consistency, about your online footprint. Uh, this, and, and if we could really drill down on this part, because... Um, I think it's obvious to, to as an ocean, but you know it could be easily overlooked. I think, can't it? You know, in some cases. And that's it. And that's the, the main thing here. So when people talk about SEO and um, I suppose that their, their their web presence, you know, their their online yeah. footprint, Mike, um, they think right. I've just got a website, and Google looks at that, and um, I get ranked off the back of that. Yeah. Incorrect. It's, it's just not right. Trust me. So Google now more than ever are taking third party websites into consideration. Yeah. Um, you'll see this actually, you know, if you're 
again, if you want to test this, if you're watching this right now and you go into, if you search on Google, you'll see that if you've got a Google My Business Profile set up, um, if, and, it's, and if it's synced up correctly with your social media profiles, for example, yeah. um, just below your listing, it will actually pull through your All your phone numbers profile. and everything. That's it, you've got your phone numbers, and then just below that, if you're, you know, if you've got the, the, um, the, the correct profile synced, you've got your, you know, your Twitter profile, your Twitter handle in there, and, you, you, and your Facebook. So what that tells us is that Google, I suppose, are looking not just at your website, but they're looking at third-party websites that your information is yep. stored. That's it. So, so just from a, a, just to be clear, and again, what we're talking about, we we may be talking a bit of jargon here, and I apologise to the audience for that. So when we talk about an online footprint being up to date, Mark, just give us a bullet point list of what we class as an online footprint that you need to keep up to date. Maybe two or three bullet points of things that that, that fall into this category. Yeah, absolutely. So it's things like it's, it's your your business information. So first and foremost, your company name. It yep. needs to be the same company name. You know, don't add this. It sounds bizarre, and it, you know, yeah, I know. about it now. I look at you know, I go into businesses and I sit down with them and I go, right on Facebook, you called da, 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 limited, and on this you called you know, you've missed the limited out on this, and you've got half your name on this one here. You've gone for you know an abbreviation here. They're like, yeah, what's the problem with that? Well, yes. Google, <laughs> how can Google look at your social profile, look at this profile and match them all together? I mean, it's, yeah. it, you know, when I, when I say it like that, they're like, oh yeah, I get it. So and consistency you know, is there, like, yeah. It's, it's light bulb moment. So it's things like your company name, your phone number, email address, um, your, your physical address, you know, headquarters, things like your map listing. Again, Google My Business map listing, really quite important. Uh, your bios, your links, your you know your videos, accreditations, it's, it's everything, Mike. You, you know, yeah. what, any information that you're putting out there on the web, it needs to be consistent throughout. Consistent. And then, in, and then when it is consistent, Mark, Google's looking at it, it's matching it, it's improving it, and it's compounding it, isn't it, to give you a better position. That's it. That's it. Yeah. All Google's looking for is consistency so they can rank you effectively. That's yeah. It. No, that's absolutely fine. And I think just touching on a couple of tools, I mean, it, would, it wouldn't be an SEO discussion if we didn't talk about Google Webmaster Tools, Analytics, Google Indexing, and I know you touched about earlier about Google My Business. So maybe if you could just touch on about, you know, the role that things like Google Webmaster Tools, Analytics, Google Indexing, Google My Business all play in that role. Right, okay, so we'll start off with analytics then. Mm. Uh, the way that I dis describe it, and again, it's in layman terms to, to, to my customers who are not familiar with it, it's basically, I use analytics to, to score your website, um, your website, I suppose, efficiency of website, yeah. you know, how, it, how it's actually performing, Mike. Yeah. So how many hits you get into the website, how many clicks, um, you know, are they looking at your website on mobile devices, on, you know, on computers, on desktops? So it's basically, how we determine how well your website's performing. Yeah. So, and, and, and as you know, obviously websites, they're not cheap. If you get a good website, you know, yeah. it's, it's an investment. It's and a digital anything, asset, yeah. Absolutely, with anything you want your return in your investment. So yeah. how can you how can you determine the, the, the ranking, how well that website's performing? It's with Google Analytics. No, oh, that's it's great. Simple, it's as simple as that. Yeah, and the Google indexing, Mark? Yeah, so, so that's Google Analytics. If you want to check out Google Search Console as well, it used yeah. to be called Google Webmaster Tools. Yeah, that's where yeah. I've got it down. So old, old school. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, so yeah, Google Search Console or Webmaster Tools. I mean, this is more basically like a health check for your website. Yeah. So if you've got any broken links, any 404 errors, any other major errors, um, it will be brought up in your, you know, your, your Search Console profile. Google yeah. actually email you saying you've got a problem. So it's really important that you get your Google search console profile set up. Even, I mean, we touched on the hack, didn't we? Uh, yeah. you know, things With the search console, that's how Google checks. Comes yeah. along, along to your website, oh, I can see some malicious content that might be stored on there. Right, Mark, quick, come to this website and check this out. Yeah. It's, it, again, it's, it's kind of like your health check. Um, yeah. I, I like to call it that. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And that obviously leads in, you know, not leads in, but you know, you, you've got, there's other things that contribute to SEO performances that are backlinks, um, this you know, robots TXT files, and I'm talking jargon here, and and various other things that we need to address from that. But you know, maybe if you could just sort of give us a summary uh, before we move into sort of like the content side of it, um, you know, about you know things about on-page SEO, the tools that you could use, maybe things like Yoast and all those type of things. So maybe if you could just sort of open up that you know, if we're looking at websites, we're looking at SEO. Uh, what are the fundamentals as well? What are the tools? You know. Um, 
you know, and then we could just maybe just get that out into the into the podcast show, and then you know, if anybody's looking at it, they can make a note, they can go back, and then they can maybe check them. Use them as a checklist. I, I have a checklist. Do I need it? Uh, you know, is this am I at this level? So you know, just just give us some other contributing factors, uh, Mark. You know, from backlinks and you know, and and, and meta tags and slugs and all that type of stuff. And right. Mark will explain, and I'm not talking about the nasty type of things. I'm talking about there. There is a, a, a digital term on here, guys. So uh, over to you, Mark, and uh, we'll we'll try and de-jargon it as best as possible for all our audiences. Yeah, we're getting into the nitty gritty now. So yeah. Yeah, stay with stay with us. <laughs> That's it. So it's, go get the kettle on. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So if you said to me, Mark, right, where would you begin with an SEO, or where would you begin the SEO on a page? Let's let's yeah. take that as an instance. So I'd begin with some keyword analysis, Mike. Yes. So what we mean by keyword is a phrase or a term that somebody would type in, a customer would type into Google to find your service. So yeah. that's what we mean by a keyword in terms of, I suppose, uh, SEO. So we'd do some keyword analysis, we'd, we'd profile your customers, we'd look at your competitors, we'd do some competitor analysis, you know, to see uh, who's yeah. doing well in your industry, to see what, how have they got to the top spot. So we kind of look at their keywords. I was going to say Nick then, we'd, um, we'd look at their keywords, uh, see <laughs> why they're doing so well with that. So it's, it's the keyword analysis that's really important before you yeah, jump absolutely. into on page, uh, what we call on page SEO. Yeah. So do the keyword analysis, get the data, get the search terms that people are, that people are searching for. And then, I mean, it's, it's, it's as simple as this, turn yeah, those I, keywords into page. I, Absolutely. And, you know, people said, how do I use, what tools do I use, Mark, for things like that? Now, there's both free and premium tools. Um, yep. Like anything, you know, free tools are sometimes good and it's a great place to start. But for the more advanced people who are really wanting to ramp up, uh, I'll get this one out of the way. The thing that we use here at the Success is a product called Espionage. So, ice, so it's like you know, espionage, but with an I. Espionage is totally, it's totally uh, legal. Um, it's a monthly subscription. It, it's not the cheapest product in the world, but the analytics that you can get. And as an example, if you're in the, I don't know, uh, the leisure spa business, and you wanted to really enter in either whether that's to paid traffic, so you need your Facebook, Google ads, are you still going to need keywords for that and audience segmentation, or you're going into the SEO uh, on your site and organic, then you could put maybe put your best competitor who's really doing a strong job on there. You can put that out there, URL in there, and it's going to give you all their Google AdWords, it's going to give you all their landing page, and it's going to grade them. And um, there's things like you know, keyword effective indexes, and that's a bit more. I say this is more of an advanced strategy, but what it, the, the benefit of paying for a tool like that is that you know, if you're serious about it, is because the we talked earlier right off this bat of the show about. Uh, SEO being a long burn sort of situation and Facebook and Google ads as well can be costly because you put it up there and you have to test and measure, test and measure and test and measure and you might be a week or two or three or four or sometimes even longer working out what's working but you know if you invest into a tool like ispionage.com um, you could put the people who are really crushing it online. You can see what keywords they're using and what's working and, you know, whether the adverts or the keyword effective index is over a certain score, 70 or 80 or 90. And then doesn't it make sense to go and use those type of keywords in a similar type of environment that you could shortcut that two weeks or three months period and just take it down to, I'll go live with the most effective keywords that I know what people are showing. And these are the paid tools that, you know, we as pros are using to really shortcut the return or, or fast track the return on investment and shortcut the testing time uh, but as I say they do come a premium there's tools like SEMrush that's S-E-M-Rush.com we prefer the Ispionage.com um, but you know test them out I think they all offer free trials mark anyway don't they the paid tools but uh, maybe you could just give us some free tools as well for people just getting started who maybe don't have the budget for that yeah so there's a couple there's a couple on the market um, Google do one uh, yep. Google keyword planner um, yep. used to give you the, the uh, quite uh, in-depth data on that, but now they actually require you to create a Google AdWords campaign to get the oh, right. data on that. So if you search for a keyword term, they'll just say, yeah, uh, zero to 100 people are searching for this, where uh, before it was 10 or 20, whatever it was. So they've, they've kind of taken control back on that. But yeah. you know what you need to do to get around that? Quick tip is just set up a, um, a Google AdWords campaign and then go to the keyword, sorry, set up a Google AdWords campaign. Don't put your payment details in there. Yeah. You still get access to the keyword planner so it's google yeah. keyword planner on that and um, good starting point uh, some people hate it some people love it in in our industry the seo industry but it's it's, it's the basics i suppose uh, yeah. another one is keywordtool.io um, again they've got a free version and a, a paid version but 
if you're just cutting your teeth with this, like you know, if you're just getting started with it, check those those two out first. You, it'll really, yeah, really. I mean, look, what we teach all our clients here at the Success Hub, uh, you know, we, we get clients coming in on really low level sort of starter points, so they're just getting started. We call it getting off the bench and getting in the game, and then we've got more advanced people who are you know crushing it at you know six figure levels and all sorts of things like that. But um, we call version one is better than version knob. Um, and if you're sat there thinking, hey, you know, it sounds complicated, whatever, as Mark said, go, go, search Google Keyword Planet, just go through there again, shoot us some uh, messages on the blog, we'll be more than happy to. Maybe, Mike, you could even do a quick screen cap video or something and post it on there and, and send a yeah. reply out to show you how that's done. Uh, but there's loads of free training online for Google, like there is for Facebook, you know, Flight School, for Twitter and, and, and Facebook Blueprint and Google. There's loads of free training to get that, so you shouldn't be stuck. But if you are, let us know, we'll help you out. So. Don't worry about trying to be, you know, you know, the, the best overnight. There's another saying that we use after version one is better than version none, and that is ninjas don't start out as ninjas. And that credit goes out to a guy called Brad Madden, or out at Sixth Division in Phoenix. But um, it's something that we adopt because it's so right. You know, ninjas don't start out as ninjas. You know, you're not going to be an SEO strategist, an SEO, you know, ninja overnight. You you got to start somewhere test and measure, get your results, move it to the next stage, test and measure, get the results. And like I said, the paid tools that I mentioned earlier, Semrush is awesome, Icepinage is our you know, preferred uh, tool of choice just because of the analytics and uh, the deep integrations that it has. Um, but you, if you're not ready for that, there's, there's plenty of free stuff and that's where your version one over version none is, is certainly better. Um, so you know, that's dealing with keywords, Mark. So the next stage after you've got your keywords rattled down, buddy, what, where would you, you sort of say the next step is? So we need to start looking at the website then. So we need to start to get these keywords in the website in a strategic order. We need to look at your heading tags, you know, starting off from heading ones, which we call H1s, believe it or not, all the way down to H6. <laughs> so H1, H2, H3, H3, all the way down. Uh, H1's usually your page title. Yeah. So your keyword kind of wants to be in the page title. Obviously yeah. it makes sense for Google to find that keyword right at the top of the page and then work your way down. Don't overdo it with keywords, um, you know, around 10, five to 10, 15, maybe a push, but don't overdo it because if you're trying to trick Google, they, they know, they're, they're yeah. clever enough to know this type of thing now. So don't yeah. try to. Don't, so the strategies with keywords is um, a question that I know we get asked a lot, Mark, in our strategy sessions is, you know, how do I, how many keywords do I choose per page? Do I put more than one keyword on a page? And again, this is pretty basic stuff. So if the intermediaries who are listening, I apologize, but I just want to make sure that we, we really give value to the people getting started. Um, you know, the intermediaries know this, but so Mark, if you could cover how many keywords per page, and what type of keyword would you select for your homepage versus a keyword for your solutions or product services page? Maybe you could cover that for us. I think um, there's, there's that, sorry, there's a divide in the uh, the SEO community whereby you know how many people, uh, sorry, how many keywords you should have on the page, and uh, and it always is with these type of things. You're either on one side of the fence or the other, Mike. Um, yeah. For me. And the way that I've had some great success with my clients and, uh, you know, together we've worked on SEO and, and what's working for us is I just try to strip it back, keep it simple. Yeah. So if you've got a keyword, Absolutely. Mike, and if that's your, your core keyword, why would you want to dilute that keyword with any other keywords for on, on a page? So you're just competing against yourself and diluting it down, aren't you, as you said? I mean, it's not rocket science. Just think, if you've got 10 different keywords on one page and Google comes along, crawls, and it goes, right, okay, I can see this this keyword's quite important. You've got it a couple of times across the site, but you've also got this keyword and this keyword, and I know they're all relevant and, and things like that, but why not just make Google's life simple? This yeah. is my keyword. It's here, 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 here. It's in the alt tags. It's on the images, sorry. It's in the URL. It's in the permalinks. It's on external factors. Get it. Just makes It just makes Google's life easier. So for me, try to keep keep it around the, the single keyword and it, 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 it makes sense. It makes yeah, sense. absolutely. And, you know, look at it from the reality, you know, the entrepreneurs looking, getting started with search engine optimization. What I'd, I'd really like to sort of cover on this, and this is a, print, a general principle across targeted and focused marketing. You're either in the hope marketing land where you're just putting stuff out there hoping that people are going to buy your product or respond or you, you've got a better strategy behind it where you, you're picking out your audience you pick what we call them an avatar uh, you've got a you know what the number one problem challenge and pain points is and and the, and the key statement there not keyword but key statement is uh, number one so 
if you're going out there trying to solve some of this problem or help them achieve the dreams, then, you know, if you're using things like lead magnets or tripwires or any other type of incentive to bring people in to grow your list and making inquiries, you know, stat after start, industry after industry, time after time, it's proven that the conversion rates are always better when you're solving one big thing. I'm going to solve, you know, you know, how do you lower your heating bills in winter? I'm going to solve how to, you know, um, improve your wedding with awesome cocktail experiences or, you know, you're solving one thing. You're not trying to say, hey, I can solve this, but I can also do this, 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 and this. So if you focus on that one big thing strategy, whether that's in your one big thing and your best, most profitable customer, the big biggest problem how are you going to bring them into your business and then you know that you, you get clear on that sort of mentality dare I say you know so you stop thinking the old way of marketing and you start thinking the new way of marketing then that would drip down mark wouldn't it into the SEO strategy that hey I know my audience is this or my avatar has got this problem or I know this is the, the you know the pond that I play in or the service or solutions that I play in and um, yeah you know like I say you know I've got a client who's in the bartending industry um, and they do you know high-end premium um, you know cocktails and you know a uh, shameless plug here but if anybody's uh, wanting to do a corporate event or a, you know a um, a wedding you know mix and twist.co.uk so that's mix and twist.co.uk ask for lucia james they're awesome guys up there uh, and, and they really know what their audience is like down the road, who what the person looks like is a 21st birthday party a 50th birthday party a 30th birthday party a corporate event you know even down to wedding planners and wedding fairs and they've really got it nailed down and they've done one of the better jobs that I've ever seen and really segmented the audience. So a big shout out to them guys there. Um, but when they then do their SEO or their paid traffic, they can then pick out that one big thing, drop it in there, and then it's all congruent, Mark, isn't it? Through the adverts, the funnels, the, the SEO, the landing pages, and the results are just just better. So, uh, you know, that, that one big thing, guys, is I know we've gone on about it and I'm gonna I'll probably dug myself into a hole too much about it, but I can't stress the importance of it. So, Mark, I concur with that. And again, that's another sort of, you know, profound or fundamental strategy that you need to do. Don't try and be all things to all men, I think is what we're saying. That's it. And, and, and the way I describe it is be laser focused. Just yep. be laser focused on one thing, one keyword, whatever it is. I mean, on the flip side, it might mean that you're going to have to create multiple pages, multiple yep. blog posts for multiple keywords. Great. SEO is not easy. Marketing is not easy. Get over <laughs> it. You've got, to, you've, got to put the, you've got to put the work in to get the result. Yep. Yeah, it, absolutely. And you should. And that's, and you know, if you check back on content and social, I think in the Getting the Game podcast episode eight, we did a session with Megan Heron, uh, the success of, sex, success of lead uh, content and social media uh, strategist. Uh, and Megan talks about content strategies. And, you know, what Mark's covering there is absolutely spot on. Uh, that, you know, it ain't hard. It, it ain't easy. It is hard. It needs work. It needs you to understand your audience. If you're looking for a silver bullet, just to sort of flick a switch and turn it on then great that can be achieved but that's you're gonna well you can mark but you've got to pay with your wallet um, yeah it's not going to be done over time you're going to need to hire some serious expert people that's going to be x thousands of pounds a month and then you know but this still test and measure to go weeks or months to get to where you're at uh, but if you're just starting out you know, as I always say, it doesn't matter. It's not just digital marketing. You either pay with your time or you pay with your wallet. Uh, take your choice. And, you know, if you don't have the skill gaps, you'd be better to pay with your wallet at a level that you can afford to get the results that you're expected. If you if you have got the skill sets, then you pay with your time or, or you choose to blend it. Uh, but it ain't easy. It is a process. And, you know, there's also a, a blog that we have at blog.thesuccessor.uk about brand and channeling, about how you brand and your channels and your products. Sit. And ultimately, you should have blogs by different channels blogs by different products and social media adverts and then again as we're talking in seo with mark here there's a keyword around all of that and uh, so you know you have 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 blogs you know that might be 50 70 100 social media adverts it might be you know seven 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 keywords driving it. And then, you know, it's that congruency from what the customer sees in the, the, the you know, the web, whether it's paid or, or organic search, you know, free search, all the way through to maybe what you put in your landing page or your web page. And it just, just really knitting it all together. And um, maybe, Mark, we should do a live training or a live stream on the, just that congruency, keeping that right all the way through the funnel at point and, you know, check back in for a later episode. We'll look like we'll get that documented up or something. But, uh, yeah. but that's awesome. So, Mark, I think what would be beneficial is at this stage instead of bouncing about with it yeah. uh, and I think what would be awesome for especially even the more intermediate people is just as for a refresher but for the for the, the, the guys just getting the guys and girls just getting started 
um, when we sort of SEO up a, a, um, a page and whether we use Yoast plugin or anything else, maybe you take it from the slug or the URL all the way down to like the meta description and just sort of give the five sort of key things that we cover and then a brief description for them. So get your pads and pens ready, guys. Again, it will be in the show notes uh, that you can download at blog.thesuccessor.uk. But um, if you can, uh, Mark's just going to now share with you sort of the, the five fundamentals that you need to make sure you've got nailed to make sure that the basics of SEO is going to be as high as possible. So Mark, if you could cover those for us, mate, just in order, that would be awesome. Absolutely. And I suppose it, it's great that we've talked about the keyword beforehand. So we understand what a keyword is. Now what we're going to do is put that keyword into the page and this is how we do it. So, and again, you just mentioned, you know, the Yoast plugin uh, for, for WordPress, just get it. If you've yeah. got a WordPress website or if you're if you want knowledge around SEO, I mean, subscribe to their blog. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a great source of any, anything to do with SEO, Mike, uh, WordPress SEO. Just it's Yoast, Yoast, isn't it? Yeah, 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 Yoast on that. So, yeah, great, great plugin. Make sure you install it into the website and what that plugin allows you to do, actually. So you install the plugin onto your website, you go to your WordPress page and you're creating a new page. At the bottom, I suppose, of the page, you get like a traffic like system score. So First and foremost, you've got your keyword because we've done that keyword analysis bit to begin with. We're going to put that keyword now into the page. And what it's going to do is actually going to give you a traffic like score. So it's going to say, right, okay, okay, Mark, we're resting up this page and we can see that you've not got a couple of things in place. Here's your red, red flag. Yeah, and that's what you need to be focusing on. That's what we're saying, isn't it? That's it. So reds obviously want to be turned into greens and the ambers, again, ideally you want it to be showing all green, lighting up green. And at that point, you've SEO'd up your, your web page. So keyword into the Yoast tool, follow that, follow that, um, follow that, uh, I suppose the, the instructions on screen. So what that it tells you to do, I suppose, and we'll cover this now in the, the points that we need to be doing is, I mean, top of the page, I suppose you, we talked about headings. You need to get your headings in there, heading ones, heading twos, things like that. Um, from that as well, we need to look at the actual URL, uh, the permalink of the, the page. Yep. So what I mean by that is, you know, whatever your domain name is, your website address, and then forward slash the service. We need to make sure that it's got, again, got the keyword in that link. Um, yeah. It could be the slug that it's referred to as well, but permalink or, you know, it's just basically the link that's in the, in the URL. So if we were to take a, a, a real live example, Mark, yeah. and let's say I'm in the kitchen installation business, just hypothetically, yeah. and I'm located in London. So, and my company name is kitchensbydesign.com. And this is a, I don't know if that company exists. It's a free plug if it does. Uh, I don't even know. It's not a client of ours and, uh, from there. But kitchensbydesign.com forward slash kitchens dash London is what we say. So if, if our keyword is kitchens London, uh, is that what we say? So it would be kitchensbydesign.com forward slash kitchens dash London. So that's what we mean, yeah? Could do. I mean, we've, what we've done there, we've talked about adding a location into the keyword. That's long tail, yeah. That's it. You can look at that. Um, but even if it's just, you know, like you say, kitchen design or kitchen supply, kitchen fitter, that's yep. your keyword. Uh, you just need to make sure that that keyword, I suppose, is in the in the URL and again, yep. across, the, across the page. So we've, we've covered the permalink at the top. We've covered, I suppose, getting it in the headings, you know, you had yep. ones, twos and threes down the page. Um, we also then need to get the keyword in something what we call the alt tag on your yep. image. ALT tag, yep. That's it. Yeah, and all that stands for is alternative text. Mm -hmm. um, and again, just to just to explain that for the, for the novices, I suppose getting getting involved with this. Um, so when Google comes to a website, they're not clever enough just yet. I don't know if this is still the case, but when they come to the website, they can only see um, the website in code, in binary. Yeah. You know, whatever it is in code. Uh, you know, so with images, they can't see the pretty pictures or the colors or whatever it is. They need to see what that image is about. And the way that yeah. we tell Google what that image is, we do it with an alt tag or yeah. alt text or an alt tag. So it's an image description That's in it. text. So if you've got a, if you, you know, we talk about kitchen supply or kitchen fritter in this yeah. fictitious example, if you put a picture up of a lovely kitchen on your page, then, you know, make sure that if you've got kitchen dash or kitchen dash fitter or kitchen dash supply or kitchens dash London, yeah. um, that make sure that you name that image kitchens dash London, kitchens dash fitter or whatever it would be. So, you know, what, like, just as a quick recap before Mark continues, the URL's got kitchen, we'll use kitchen 
kitchen fitter, kitchen yeah. fitter in, the headlines got kitchen fitter in, the first body, you know, the text of the first paragraphs got kitchen fitter in, and now the images got kitchen fitter in. So it's one, two, three, it's just going through all the way on your headers and things like that. So after the image on the alt um, image mark, what's the next one, buddy? Uh, yeah, don't forget uh, videos. You can actually yep. tag up videos as well, the same thing. So it's just media, any media that's on the page, make sure you've tagged it up with something relevant with a keyword that Google can read. Yep. Um, so yeah, we're coming off that. Um, I suppose then looking at the actual um, the, the snippet previews that you're gonna, so when you SEO a page, Mike, um, Google, obviously you can, you can put a meta description or a title for that page. Yep. And that's what actually gets pulled through to the Google listing. Yep. So we call that a title tag and a meta description. Yeah. Uh, and people that are familiar with SEO will know this anyway. But again, we need to get the keyword in both the title tag and the meta description. Yeah. Um, just just so Google can see it again. And it's also good for, like you say, if somebody's typing that keyword into Google and they see your your advert, for a better word, you know, your organic listing where it says, yep, fits in London, whatever it is, we've got that keyword in there and it's going to entice them to, to come through. So yeah. that's the main, I suppose that's the main purpose of the, the title tag and the meta description is to entice people from your Google index listing through to the page. Yeah. So, so that's awesome. So just, I know we've bounced about with a bit of discussion there, so let's just list them out. So the slug or the URL, it needs to be your keyword. Once identified, needs to be in the URL. Yeah. It needs to be in the uh, titles, you know, the head, well, sorry, the headlines. It needs to be in the body copy. It must be the images or videos or any media, as Mark says. It needs to be in the title tag and obviously in the meta description. So literally, it doesn't matter where you are on the page, uh, and, and I know Google do this in nanoseconds, but where it comes through, it's picked it up and the more of those that you take off and mark mentioned earlier in the yoast and just just to be clear that's like toast with a y y o a s t if anybody's missing it yoast.com uh, that's the plugin that you need in there mark talks about the uh, traffic like system and you know whilst there's always discrepancies and sometimes it's you know common sense but you know, the more of those you're going to get in the more chance you're going to get the ambers to greens the greens up there and any reds eliminated and that's then when google do see it, then you know you're going to rank a lot higher, um, and it's all going to contribute to that uh, you know promised land of page one of Google. Uh, which, <laughs> if you could do it organically and you keep and keep on top of it, then you know I'm not saying that you know SEO is the be all and end all, but it's one one strong string in your S in your digital uh, you know strategy that you need to have. And um, well, I suppose just before we move on to content now is. Um, you don't do SEO once, do you? You know, it, it's a bit of an on labor of love, isn't it? You know, you need to play about with it on an ongoing basis. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, it's with anything to do with marketing, Mike. You know, um, if you, you if you stood still and you're not doing anything, you're getting left behind. I mean, we spoke yeah. about this today, didn't we? You actually you did. you're actually going backwards because you're just going to be left left in the dust. So yeah. With SEO, if you know you've got to consider that your competitors, if you get to the do get to the top spot, they're going to be jealous and they're going to be. <laughs> on your heels they're going to be you know looking at ways to improve that so you know you just got to be constantly improving this mike you know moving forward uh, at a steady rate yeah yeah and, and i do appreciate mark it's an impossible question because different sites different industries different competitive yeah. positions but on a mean average when would the entrepreneurs listen to the show check their seo strategy should they do it daily weekly hourly monthly yearly you know just and i know it's a mean average and you know if you're in a super competitive industry it's going to be more often than not but yeah. you maybe you could just give us a little bit of guidance around how often you should keep a tab on your seo strategy your seo your touch-ups and things like that Great question. I suppose it comes back to what we covered uh, previously, which is Google Analytics. Mm -hmm. So Google Analytics is your website scoring factor. You know, yeah. it, it's great. You can check Google where you're ranking, but it, again, with this is another thing to, to consider. You could be at the top spot on Google, but you might not even be getting the clicks because you've got the wrong keyword. Yeah. So, absolutely. and do, do you see what I'm saying there? So it's your analytics that actually give you the true data. So you yeah. could be at the top spot and you just think, yeah, I'm getting all the business, I'm getting all the links, but you might not be. It's your analytics that say, right, Mark, you're only getting 300 links from this keyword, sorry, 300 clicks through to your keyword. What are they doing when they're on the website? Are oh, they go, they have a bounce, which you know that the keyword isn't quite right or the message on your website isn't quite right. Uh, and then what they're doing, they're going through to the, you know, the flow of the website. So the only way to truly understand your, your SEO strategy, I suppose, or your SEO performance is looking at your Google Analytics to begin yeah. with. Keep uh, it on and top from of it. that, yeah, well, that's it. And there's, there's other tools that you can do to check it on a regular basis, you know, um, you know, where you're ranking and how to improve that. But analytics is your friend, you know, and a yeah. lot of people don't, don't look don't at the analytics, Mike. they just don't. Um, so coming back to how long often should you do this weekly, weekly, yeah. monthly, I mean, 
Seriously. You know. And if you and if you're doing and I know we're talking SEO EMR, but if you're doing paid traffic, wow, you know, you, you really need to be on top of it and you need some fire reporting yeah. system and advanced stuff because you just could be pouring money down the drain. And you know, I know some of the services that we offer here and paid traffic services and SEO services, you know, I know some clients will sometimes turn around and say, Really, how much do you charge? And they actually think that we just set it up and then leave it and then they think, Why do you keep charging me? But you know, it's 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 very much like a heart monitor that's on on your system and then we're looking for you know beats and uh you know there's outliers and what i mean by outliers is that you know if, if you're constantly getting between 50 and 60 you know clicks or, or visits or whatever he bounces or you know whatever goal completions completions yep. uh, and then you suddenly get a day where it's 140 or you get a couple of days that's zero then they're outliers we're just going to take them out and then we're going to concentrate on that core set of data um and as I did pre-announce it, Mark, that it's an impossible question, and I don't want to sort of, sort of make that clear. But you know, there's so many factors. You know, um, like you said, is your content right? Is your page speed right? Is your video right? Is your message right? Do you have a, you know, are you advertising one thing on, a, on an advert or a blog post, and then they come through and it's totally different than people thinking, "Hey, I thought I were walking into McDonald's, and then suddenly when I walk through the door, it's Kentucky inside." You know, so there's loads of things like that that are con congruency, continuity. Um, and things that can affect the analytics more than SEO, but you know, the analytics thing from there. So you know, if you think about it, if you've ever sort of been a university or studied, you know, you, you sort of create a paper, don't you, a, a thesis, a document. So for, you know, and we will do a, another podcast just on analytics and you know, yeah. we probably need to do five podcasts on analytics in, in reality. Uh, it's such a, it's such a complex yeah. thing, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's in depth stuff, but it's, it's, it's so important. So important yeah. for your website. So if you if you going to enter SEO and manage that yourself, awesome. Hopefully you've had some value there. Uh, if you're going to get somebody to do it, then you know, try and make sure that they're going to monitor that and not just set it up and leave it. This is not a set it and forget it policy, you know, because uh, you know things change. And Mark used a great saying. We we had a we had a strategy session earlier today uh, on a client, and we were talking, and as Mark said about. You know, if you stand still, you know, you don't stand still. If you stand still, you actually get, you go backwards because the technology is moving forward. Your competitors are moving forward. Your customer demands are moving forward. Uh, you know, uh, Google and Facebook and YouTube and, and these are moving forward. So by standing still, if you think that you're holding your own, let me tell you, you you're going backwards at a massive rate of knots. So, you know, get that one out of your head straight away, put it in the bin, get serious, sit yourself down, get yourself organized and think, right, if I'm not moving forward, I'm moving backwards and there is no neutral gear here. So Mark, I think we've covered some awesome stuff in the podcast and you know, I hope the entrepreneurs who are listening, both you know, the, the juniors and the novices and the just getting started, want to get you off the bench. I hope you've had some value there. Uh, the intermediary guys, um, you know, hoping that you've, you know, uh, had a good refresher and some maybe some great links and tips from Mark. And I think it wouldn't be SEO if we weren't talking about content, Mark, to sort of wrap up on this thing. And, um, you know, first and foremost, if we could just explain what we mean about content and then explain why it's uh, important in, as far as SEO is concerned. That's it. I suppose with your website, um, you've got content on your website. So we, yeah. again, just so we, we understand what that, we mean by that, we mean text, text is content, images is content, video is content, anything, documents, PDF, yeah. this is content on your website. Yeah. So it's anything that Google can pick up on and it's also anything that your, your customers consume. Yeah. So information that they would consume is the key sort of thing to understand there from copywriting, image, video, watching, downloads, you know, audio podcasts like this, all this is content. That's it. It's all, it's all content and uh, content is how Google ranks your website. It's as simple as that. Um, I go into businesses quite a lot and I, I, I have this same conversation or whether they call me up on the first uh, progress call, or, sorry, first um, you know discovery call and they say, Mark, how can we do SEO? How can we do it quickly and cheaply? And you know, what is the quick You can't. <laughs> <laughs> right, let me just stop you there. Yeah, um, just, just get this elephant out of the room. Stop, you can't. Next question. Not <laughs> a quick fix. I mean, okay, so paid, paid advertisement, you can, I mean, if you've got a good paid a pay-per-click guide, they could probably turn on a good advert within an hour, or a day, whatever it is. But I suppose in terms of organic SEO that we're talking about here, on-page SEO, uh, there's no quick fix. No. There's no quick fix, Mike. I can't come into a website, change it overnight, and it get ranked to the top spot. Yeah. No. 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 I mean, I read a great blog article this morning saying it usually takes within a year, two years to even get yeah. right at the top. I, I, 
I think that's wrong because I've, I've done it. I've got people to the top spot quicker than that. But it all comes down to the content. Yeah. So again, you might have heard, I know you've heard this one, Mike, and people listening might, might have heard uh, the phrase, content is king. Absolutely. It, it absolutely is over everything. So there's no quick fix in terms of on-page SEO. Content is king. Google's yeah. looking at your content and if it's naff and it's not very good, it's not up to the up to the you know mark, you're not going to be able to rank because of it. Yeah. Everything that so, we... Oh, sorry. So, sorry. Mark, so I was just saying, so SEO, guys, long-term strategy could take weeks, sorry, months or even years to, to, to materialize. And, you know, one of the things, Mark, the reason I was, wanted to just jump in there is yeah. um, I see so many people, uh, whether it's on social media, on blogs, or their websites, and they're just putting any old rubbish out there because they think, oh, I've got to fill this page, or I've got to put something out. Well, do you know what? You'd be better putting nothing out than rubbish out sometimes because, you know, just or try and stop to overburdening yourself and say, hey, I'm going to do one a month. You know, you'd be better putting one stellar piece of content, a video, a download, a blog post. You'd be better putting one stellar piece of content out per month. Now, hopefully you should be doing a lot more than that, but one stellar piece of content per month than five rubbish pieces of content each week because uh, it's potentially going to harm you uh, and, and people are just going to disengage with you you know it's okay shouting your mouth off out there entrepreneurs hey i'm good at this and we do that and we do that well that's what we call the we diarrhea you know you've got to connect with your audience and show them how what you do gives them benefit or solves the problems or or, or or moves them and you know moves the needle you sit in if you if any, anybody of the listeners drive a vehicle um you know you put it in neutral put the handbrake on and you sit there revving the engine, the rev counter is going to go up and down, and it's going to what we call moving the needle. Now, if you just if you just sat there looking at the accelerator, that 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 rev counter is just sitting there. And if you're just putting rubbish content out there, that's what's happening. In fact, if anything, it's probably going to stall, and people are just going to turn off and go. Whereas if you're putting stellar content out there that solves people problems, that helps them move forward in life, you not only position yourself as an expert, but you're helping these people. And then from an SEO strategy, uh, people as uh, you know, like Google and, and as Mark's covered there, they're going to recognize that people are going to engage with your content which mark is a great way to cover isn't it that the engagement of that content is also going to help as well absolutely absolutely so what it's a great point that you've just said there mike you know people go out there and go right i've posted out five blog posts just to you know just to get my seo score up because i'm getting regular content out there okay yeah. right I look at the content, the, sorry, the blogs that they've done, that they're, they're absolutely <laughs> yeah, <that's> a, <laughs> badly. Oh, but I've done 300 words to tick the box with Google. Great, great. But on the flip side of this, what you've got to remember is you custom, right? I've done five blog posts to tick the boxes with Google, right? Those five blog posts are actually harming you because Google, sorry, the, the customers are reading them and, and bouncing off. Yeah. So with Google Analytics, again, Google can see, you know, we can see your bounce rate, which is really quite important. So if somebody comes onto a page and they immediately bounce, it can mean that, can, well, it can and can't mean, again, it's, it depends on the site and the industry that you're in. If the bounce, it can be quite harmful for, for, for you as well. So you need to actually consider your customers uh, yeah. with the content that you're putting out there. Yeah. But yeah, content is absolute kin, but it has to be relevant, high value content. I think that's the way to yeah. it. You don't want to be all sizzle and no steak, guys. You know, you, you want to go out there, high, high perceived value, high actual value is the is the, is the message that I want to get across to people. So, Mark, anything else on content you think that's relevant at that stage? Um, you know, any, you know, would you say video at the moment is a lot stronger than uh, text, of course, isn't it, in certain mediums? Absolutely. I, I read a stat at the beginning of this year. I did a presentation and uh, the stat was, I think it was 76 or 77% of all website traffic this year, Mike, in 2017 will be video content. Yeah. So people yeah. are consuming video more more than ever. Yeah. And that's obviously going to going to rise. So the way that I speak to my clients and when they say, do I need videos? Right. Okay. 76% of website traffic this year is going to be videos. Have you got videos on all of your pages? No. Right, so you're not catering for your customers' needs. And yeah. want, they want to consume videos and you're not giving them. And, and what, what what does this mean to me? Right, okay. Don't want to leave. They're doing it. They're either going to go to your website, not see it in bounce, and then when they get to the competitors and they see their nice video, consume the video, um, you've lost it. The sales yeah. gone. So that Absolutely. Means, that's, it. that's it. So the question is not really, um, and, and I know, Mark, you made it from an example point of view. It's not question, as, as you as entrepreneurs, you're selling your businesses, you're driving home in your cars, listen to this, you know, whatever. It's not, you know, 
should I be doing video? It's you must be doing video uh, and you must be doing video. In, and that's not just guys. And I know we're on an SEO topic here, but you know, digital marketing is such intertwined into other areas, um, not just SEO, but you know, that's just the social posts, you know, the, the amount of engagement. I mean, we run Facebook ads on a regular basis, whether it's to our competitions, to our uh, marketing funnels. And when we look at our paid traffic stats, Mark, and, and the Google stats on video ads, over what I call static image ads. They just outperform them all the time. And again, there's a strategy behind that as well. You know, you're not just going to sit up there and talk to somebody for two hours on a video and hope they're going to watch it all do it to the end. You know, there is strategies and durations and times that you're going to do that. But uh, video, 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 video. So, you know, if you're not in video, and it's not expensive to start. You don't need a 10, 20 grand studio like we have here or whatever. You know, you get a smartphone. You know, you get your iPhone here. Uh, you get a little tripod, um, you know, and, uh, you know, but I would say one of the key things, and again, it's just to add more value slightly off the SEO topic, Mark, but if you are using video, make sure you equally invest in a decent microphone. Um, here, you know, we use Rode microphones here at the Successor for our Lavellia mics that clip on here when we're on screen. Um, that's R-O-D-E, uh, Rode, but the Sennheiser, all sorts of stuff. Try to avoid going to Amazon and getting a 14 pound mic because that's why the 14 pounds, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a Rode mic will be 120, 30, 40 pound, a decent one. You might get one in the sale at 80. A Sennheiser will be something there. You know, we, we like both me and Mark now are on Yeti microphones, blue Yetis that we're talking through. And if you ever look at the cool blue Yetis, they look like the 1950s radio station mics. But, you know, the, the audio quality, if you, even if you've got great content to get out there on your videos, or, but your audio sucks then you know, people are going to turn out and go. Uh, so get your audio right, whether you're doing it, on, even on an iPhone, you, you know, great cameras on iPhones, but audio is pretty cool. Not going to really affect your SEO mark audio, but it will affect you know, the quality of the videos and how much people will engage, which then, you know, how far that you take them into, you know, branding them to your company or bolting them to your company as an authority. So um, videos are key, uh, content is key, um, congruency is key, relevancy is key, think about your audience. And, uh, you know, I think Mark, I think that sort of wraps uh, episode nine, you know, of SEO Essentials for Entrepreneurs. But I know we've covered so much and we're probably way over time here. So I'm really appreciative of your time, Mark. It's, 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 I'm really grateful for what you've put into the people today. And hopefully you guys have had some super value. But Mark, if you were to summarize the ask hour and 10 or ask hour and 15 with being on this podcast, um, oh, if you could, <laughs> yeah, it does. Time when you have, time flies when you have fun. Um, but if you know, for the entrepreneurs who are listening to this, <clears throat> Uh, we've bounced around a bit. We've thrown so much content and value to you. So hopefully you can get a start of it. Don't forget, you can head over to blog.thesuccessor.uk and get the show notes. But before we wrap it, Mark, uh, if you could just sort of maybe summarize three or four tips or whatever uh, in just simple bullet point format, uh, what these guys and gals out there need to be getting started with, uh, what are the top sort of tips that we would summarize this podcast with regarding SEO? Yeah, okay, and um, let's go back to the Google products that we talked about. Make sure you're on, you've are on. you got these set up. I mean, they, they are fundamental to your website success, your SEO success, whatever you want to call it. Just get on these, get these profiles set up. So we're talking about Google, Google Analytics, if I can say it, um, <laughs> Google Search Console, Google uh, mobile test, you know, some guys still haven't got mobile friendly websites, so oh. use the Google. Yeah. Sorry, we've that. <laughs> <laughs> Google, uh, sorry, Google uh, mobile test and Google page insight. Uh, again, Google my business. You know, Google's got these three tools that are out there that you can just tap into. Make sure you get your profiles set up and um, you'll never look back. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. That's, that's the first one on, on Google Pro, uh, uh, products. Second one, with the SSL certificates that we talked about, you know, I suppose the security side of things, you can get SSL certificates, you can buy premium ones. I mean, they used to be over a hundred pounds or so, coming down to 50 quid now, you can get some for 20 or 30 pounds. There is a new one on the market called Let's Encrypt. Right. Um, really quite, it's a new initiative and their main, their core um, interest is to, to make SSL certificates free for all. So, so you can get a free SSL certificate with somebody called Let's Encrypt. 
Um, again, you might look, want to look in the paid versions um, as well. But it's just a great tip. Check out Let's Encrypt SSL. Brilliant, brilliant tip, Mark. And listen, guys, there's no excuses. So get your web developer on this. If yep, that's you're it. comfortable tech yourself, Let's Encrypt. There's no excuses. You know, you shouldn't be, you know, thinking, well, you know, I can use all these free tools, but I can't get into the SSL market because it's chargeable. Mark's just shared that with you. That's an awesome tip. Thanks, Mark. Really appreciate it for the audience. Yeah, and again, coming back to, I suppose, monitoring your your SEO performance. We talked we talked on uh, SEM Rush. There's a there's yeah. a Pat Linko, uh, Neil Patel. You might have seen him on social. Yeah, media. absolutely. Yeah, up and coming at the moment. Um, SERPs is another one, but I mean, the one that I tend to use as well is Moz. Yeah, you must have heard of that. I mean, absolutely. Moz SEO, Moz Tools. Um, they've got some free tools which are great. Go and go and check them out. You know, put your website your website address into those tools. And perform yourself, you know, rank yourself, um, give yourself a performance score, and um, again, yeah, it all helps. You know, so that's can... moz.com, moz. Oh, yeah. And, moz uh, yeah, yeah, MOZ. It, yeah. Um, again, with this, have a go at it yourself or go back to your developer and say, right, here's my score that I'm currently getting with my website. How can we improve it? Yeah, because if you're not, guys, you are leaving thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds of money on the table. Um, you know, if you're paying for paid traffic and you've not got a handle on your analytics, then wow, that's even that's 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 yeah. just self that's just self infliction. You know, the organic stuff you're suffering with. And remember what we said earlier: SEO is not just the be all and end all. It's part of a wider digital strategy that you need. Um, you know, if you're unsure about your digital strategy, if you head over to thesuccessup.uk, uh, we've got a marketing audit on there, so you can click the marketing audit button. You can put your details in about your business and it'll take you through all the nine stages of digital marketing it's going to give you a wider picture as well that's a totally free tool no opt-in required you can go through and get that obviously if you do want to opt in you can get a full service report and recommendations as well so there's a bit of a shameless plug there but you know that's all to help you as well it's all about part of our free content in advance strategy that we have so that's over at the success of uk click the marketing audit button um marketing audit button is take you three or four minutes to do it you're going to get a clear picture and that also includes your website and your seo uh, sort of overview of you know, what you want to treat and how you want to improve now, all these show notes are on blog at the success of uk um so just before i wrap mark uh, i really appreciate your time absolute diamond insights like insights i can't thank you enough uh, it's been awesome having you on the show no worries at all i've um, really enjoyed it yeah cheers mike hopefully uh, the uh, the listeners will take some of this these action points away and do, and do them you know yep. say implementing yourself or you know get your you know your developers to do it but either way just do them yeah. yeah, absolutely. And if you want to shoot us a message on the blog, again, just shoot us a message. We'll get those questions answered. You can shoot us a message on our Facebook page, you know, facebook.com forward slash the success of UK. Uh, you can do that there. Um, so just do it. You know, it, it, yeah. that's the key message that we're saying. If you're not, then how serious are you being uh, online? And, you know, don't tell us you don't have time. Don't tell us you don't have budget because, you know, how much business are you looking? Stop looking at what it's costing you to do it either in time or money now and think about what it's costing you not to do it. So that's the question that I want to really ask you about today is if I don't get my SEO strategy right, if I don't deal with my online presence correctly, what is it actually costing me not to do it more than what it would be even in time or a few pounds that somebody would pay to do it? So that wraps up episode nine uh, of Getting the Game podcast show, which is SEO um, Essentials for entrepreneurs mark a massive thanks again buddy i can't thank you enough it's been diamond insights so as you know go do the hustle guys go make it happen and we're going to wrap up with you and we're going to see you on next week's show all the best guys thanks for tuning in cheers thanks you have been listening to the open mic brought to you by the success hub to find out more and to get the resources we have mentioned in this podcast episode, simply visit blog.thesuccesshub.io and view the podcast section. Thanks for listening and we look forward to catching up with you in our next episode. This podcast and associated materials is published under copyright to The Success Hub. All rights reserved. No reproduction of this material is permitted.